Good morning, it's Rocky Rolls. Hey folks. This is a morning commute. Headed to downtown Washington, D.C. It is a brisk 60, well it says 62, I don't think it's quite up to 60 yet. It's probably about 58, 59 degrees right now. Um, feels good though. We are wearing all the gear. We got on the winter gloves at the moment. But it's going to be a beautiful day this afternoon. So for the commute home, we got a second pair of gloves. In the top case. If, okay, here's your tip for the day. Always take two pair of gloves. Be weather pre prepared. A pair of gloves in case it's cooler than what you're anticipating. And if you've got your coldest gloves, a pair of gloves in case it's warmer than what you're anticipating. And by coldest gloves, I mean you may have your heated gloves or in this case, I've got my windproof, waterproof gloves on. And by the way, this is a little off-brand glove called Mad Bike. And um, I want to say these gloves cost like $22. And they really do fit great feel great I mean they're, they're nice and warm I mean for everything I just said is a very rare occasion I take these gloves out they're too cold and I need to actually go and you know swap out for the heated gloves I can usually get by with these regardless of the of the temperature and um, whereas the heated gloves cost like hundred and sixty dollars and then actually you know I don't think in no more protective than these are and um, I got on a mess jacket but I got about three layers up underneath it my guess is on the way home I'll probably take one of these layers off yeah these freaking roundabouts I get why they put them here but they really are kind of a pain in the butt Riding up underneath the um, Capitol Beltway, but I think we're gonna. Let's, uh, how much time we got? I got an eight o'clock meeting. I don't really have time to be goofing around. I was gonna say I take a scenic route, but I actually need to get into the office. You know. <laughs> really listening to the thump of this parallel twin. It's 1100 parallel and it sounds good. And, and you know it's funny. I'm not one of those, oh that bike's got to sound like this. It's got to sound like that. Let me go buy a pipe for the sound. Oh, yeah, that ain't me. And I'm not knocking y'all to do it. I get it. Ride your bike for why you ride your bike. I actually like the little sewing engine sound on my CB500X. I miss it. However, I hear the thump in this 1100. 270 degree crank. Parallel twin.
and I'll say this this Africa twin definitely feels more comfortable on the highway you know when you own a bike you have all these biases and that's what we're gonna talk about today we're gonna talk about biases when you own a bike you have all these biases towards your bike and you know nobody wants to admit when they spent money on something and then they kind of regret what they bought so they're gonna you know rationalize their purchase they're gonna defend their bike you know everybody's got some fanboyisms and um, and I can promise you I'm no you know what do you call it no exception from that um, I, if you ain't figured out by now I seem to be a Honda fanboy I keep looking at these Yamahas though but I don't actually pull the trigger um, so you know the CB500X is 471 cc parallel twin and uh, you know it's flirting with like 47 horsepower I don't remember the torques what 32 or something I mean it's a great reliable engine just enough in you know it was okay on the highway you could come out here and ride safely let me put it that way and um, however you definitely didn't have that last little uh, when you're on the highway and you're riding amongst traffic and folks are going 70 75 or 80 or 90 for that matter and you need to get out of the way it, it you know it, you, you, slowing down was always going to be your your security blanket some type of weave or slowdown because you weren't going to accelerate out of a situation on the on that um on that cb 500 none of the 500s none of those honda 500s the f the x the rebel 500 you just weren't going to accelerate out of a problem so having a larger engine does give you that option now having said all of that because that's not the topic when you're riding the smaller bike you just seem to justify oh i don't need that speed and you you kind of don't and oh uh, well you know you shouldn't have been speeding anyway and you you, you kind of shouldn't however there's this concept of maintaining you know the flow of traffic and if the traffic is speeding then damn it i'm gonna speed and that does happen on the highway especially here in the u.s on the interstates um which was what, what I was just doing. I was just on Interstate 95. So, you know, having said all of that, I do appreciate having this larger engine now for more than I thought I would when I was the owner of a 470cc. This 1084 is more than 600 additional cc's and you feel it. You definitely feel it in, in traffic and I can tell just by something I just did when I was riding I really don't mind riding in the middle two lanes on these four lane highways anymore whereas I never really felt comfortable in the middle two lanes on the CB because I just didn't feel like I had the options of maneuverability that I might need to you know avoid an accident or get out of somebody's way if someone started merging over into my lane so definitely you know people have that tendency to over defend their bike now let's talk about it I've now oh man I really need to adjust the suspension on this because it's hard <laughs> it's not made for these commutes it's not I mean excuse me it's not calibrated for these commutes I gotta soften it up um so this bike do I regret buying it? Nah. I love it. However, I will say this. I have reached a point where, you know, you buy a bike. Oh, this is my forever bike. Blah, blah. This isn't my forever bike. I can tell you that now. Um, uh, I, the things I like about it are things that I know I can get in a gold wing. So I'm still, you know, still moving my way up to the gold wing. 
and I say moving up because it'll be a upgrade in weight. Go Wing weighs at least 200 pounds more than this bike. And the other things I like about this bike, I can definitely get in a smaller bike. And I'm not sure how much smaller. I'm thinking maybe a Husqvarna 701 or a CRF 450 RL. Um, the taller seat height would come with both of those bikes. I want to say one's 35 inch, the other's 37. This is 35. And I want to say that's a narrower 35, so I'd still be able to, you know, put both feet down. Um, and this is a great one, one bike. And, and by one bike, I mean only bike. If you're only going to own one bike, this is a great bike for it to be. Because it's a great tour. It, it's great off-road if you can ride it. And it's actually not that bad commuting in the city. Um, if I really was having issues with the city commute, I could definitely lower the seat down two inches. And I definitely could, you know, right now if you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm in urban mode. So I definitely could switch it back over to my user one, which I have configured in the lowest power, or just drop it down into like, you know, the off-road configuration, which is less power. Um, you know, you got options. I'm not in tour, so not even in the most powerful mode. But I'm noticing also, um, I just got 42 miles on a gallon of gas. You know, um, I got a, did I, I did, I posted some videos this weekend where I was showing my gas mileage and I was, you know, just talking about not been getting 48 and 50 miles per gallon. It's actually going up because I'm out here cruising on the freeway. I'm on the Suitland Parkway for anybody who's in the area. And I love riding the parkways because the parkways give you nice, two nice open lanes with, um, you know, it's not traffic, but a nice steady s speed and then trees on the left trees on the right you, you would you can't tell but we're really like in the middle of the city right now this is actually a very urban area but because we're on the parkway you know you get blessed with the trees the foliage on either side of you and i promise you guys this is going to be gorgeous come october i'm going to do an october run through here and i'll probably also do gw parkway put together a nice little video probably throw some nice little music on it and get my editing together because my editing is crap but uh yeah so like I said this is a great bike but it's not my forever bike and I can tell you it's not my forever bike because it is an all-rounder the same problem that cinnamon had is a C you know the CB 500 X the Africa twin kind of has that same problem because it is a good all-rounder bike. This is just a bigger all-rounder bike. Um, definitely some advantages to the CB500. Definitely more power is an advantage. And um, uh, we're not going to do any type of filtering or anything today. That's not necessary. <sighs> um, didn't really get my foot down right on that one. Um, it's definitely, you know, a great all-rounder. Like I said, it, you know, it has the same advantages of the CB500X, just with more power more and more ground clearance. I mean, I think the biggest issue I had with the CB500X was a 17-inch wheel was a street tire, and the ground clearance was only like 7, 7 point something inches, and I wanted more ground clearance. I probably would have been, you know, I don't know what is this, I always forget, like 9.5 or something inches of ground clearance which is enough the 21 inch wheel um is you know good for off-road but i honestly don't feel like i need 21 inches next time the new cb 500 x had the 19 inch and i and i started to buy it i really did but i wanted i wanted the electronics i didn't even do i didn't even move to the africa twin for the power so much because um, i really didn't think it was that big a deal before i bought this bike uh, I did it more so for the electronics. I wanted the rider modes. Um, the new CB500 did have ABS, which was a, which was a 
a, a necessary um, addition. I had to have the ABS. Um, the traction control, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to feel it, play with it. So I wanted traction control. The, the CB didn't have that, and the CB also did not have the rider modes. So I wanted the rider modes. I wanted the traction control. I wanted the ABS. Um, you know, I was interested in the Android Auto. I hadn't really used it a lot, and quite honestly, I'm not doing that great a job of using it now. I'm still tinkering with it. I haven't really gotten to the point where it's all natural for me. But, uh, I kind of can tell, I think, why people are really big on that Tiger 900 by Triumph. I get it. And you know, I almost got the Zero DS or the Zero DSR, which would have been great for commuting. And you know, I've rode that bike a couple of times. And you know, I, my as you guys know, my commute is not that far. It's only like it depends, 12 to 20 miles, depending on the way I go. And definitely can do a round trip on a charge, even on the DS with the smaller. Um, with the smaller battery and even with that I'm tempted to go up ahead this time and it's only because I don't, I, I don't like sitting behind buses and trucks and stuff let's do it I just don't like sitting behind buses and trucks because they really cut back on your visibility. It really wasn't about the power, I promise you, it wasn't. It was all about... All about the electronics. But we'll definitely edit that out. see it. So, yeah, so, you know, that's the thing. People get their bikes, they like what they like, and they want what they want, and even if they don't like it, hey, you can always switch up, get another bike. I mean, I honestly, truly, I'm hoping to have about, you know, 10 to a dozen bikes in my lifetime. So I probably won't be on a forever bike for at least
you won't be on a forever bike for at least another decade. Now, what we're really what I got to focus on, you know, me and Nicholas are still, you know, we're definitely going to. Do, I'm, I'm actually thinking about. I was going to do a BDR um, in about three weeks, but um, I may not be able to do that now. Got some travel coming up. And um, I may still do it though. I may still do the BDR in three weeks. I'm saying three weeks, but it's really more like two weeks. No, we're in the middle of the week. That's why I'm so confused. I'm like, is it two? Is it three? It's just under three. Um, Yeah, so the whole concept of, you know, a forever bike, yeah, I, I like it in principle. I mean, and at some point you may get a bike that, you know, I'm not letting this one go. And I honestly could see myself going back and getting another CB500X. Um, I definitely could see purchasing a couple of CB500Xs for the purpose of doing the TAT. But I'm also thinking maybe some Yamaha Tenere 700s would be more appropriate for the Well, there's no such thing as one is more appropriate than the other. It's just how you plan on riding. And one of the biggest issues is, well, you know, I've been losing weight. So I've dropped down from like 240, probably 245 at the most, down to about 190, you know sometimes under 190 you know moving towards 180 which you know is like supposedly like the ideal size for a lot of these adventure bikes when they put them out but nicholas is growing he's over six feet tall now um i can't remember i want to say he's weighing 220 225 but you know uh, i can't imagine he won't be 240 when he's 16 because he's about to turn 15. He's 14 right now. Um, so, I don't know if I want to put him on a 470 for a cross-country ride. I don't think that's the way to go. And, you know, I'm also thinking about just doing a cross-country ride that is not interstate, but secondary roads, but stay on the road and just forget about the dirt. But, eh, you know, there's some inherent risk with that. You know, like a route, route 66 or something like that. Route 50, I think, goes across as well. Or a combination of. So, it may do both. You know, maybe do parts of the tat, parts of 66. Do an interstate run back. I don't know. Still thinking about all this. Well, we're just making this meeting on time.
as you can see pandemic is I guess waning down I mean people still getting sick but people are coming back to work again so the people are commuting uh, I don't come in every day and I definitely I haven't I'm not asking my staff to come back in people can come in when they get comfortable as far as I'm concerned we do a lot of virtual work and it's been working out fine I think we really need to um, rethink all these congested cities around the world and allow people to spread out and you know take advantage of especially here in the US take advantage of the land we have spread out stop sitting on top of each other passing germs and disease and running up cost for leasing and things like that so rocket rolls over and out stop what the heck did none of that get recorded you gotta be kidding I didn't record any of that ain't this some crap I'm not going back around the block yet let me play with this first <laughs> 